Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. The topic of our lecture today about colposcopy. So, what are the objectives? History about colposcopy. Definition of colposcopy. The primary goal of endoscopy, of colposcopy. Indications of colposcopy. Description of colposcope. What the equipment needed. Technique. Abnormal colposcopic finding. And lastly, data recording. And sweet score. So let us start with the history. Really, colposcopy first described by Hans Hanselman from Germany in 19. 25. Although colposcopy became common in gynecological practice across Europe, Southern America and Australia by 1950, its uptake in the Anglo-Saxon community was slow. And this is for certain reasons. Okay. It was only in the 1960 that colposcopy was practiced in the British Isles and shortly thereafter colposcopy became widely accepted as a diagnostic aid in the cervical cancer screening programs worldwide. What's very interesting that the first publication on colposcopy in British Journal of Obstetric and Gynecology was by Yusuf from Egypt who conducted an extensive study in Egypt describing the equipment, results, and the value of colposcopy in the recognition of cervical pathology. Okay, what is the definition of colposcopy? Colposcopy is a diagnostic procedure in which colposcope, which is a dissecting microscope with various magnification lenses, is used to provide an illuminated, magnified view of the cervix, vagina, vulva, or even anus. As you see in the picture here, this is the colposcope. Here, the colposcopy, application of speculum, then colposcopy with lenses, with light. Okay. So, I can use colposcope to give me a magnified view of the cervix, vagina, vulva, or anus. So, what is the primary goal of colposcopy? Generally, the primary goal of colposcopy is to identify precancerous and the cancerous lesion so that they may be treated early, of course, for when you treat the precancerous lesion early or even the early invasive cancer treated early has a better prognosis. Colposcopic evaluation is based on the finding that the malignant and the pre-malignant epithelium have a specific visual characteristics in terms of color, contour, and vascular pattern that are recognizable using colposcopy. So, what are the indications for colposcopy? Colposcopy is a diagnostic procedure performed to evaluate women with an abnormal, abnormal pap test. The colposcopy can localize the lesion, map out the extent of the lesion, and select the best site for biopsy. Positive visual inspection with acetic acid. If you did the via test, okay, and you found a seat of white area, then you, you want to be sure that this is an abnormal, maybe CIN, and so on. So, you, you can use colposcopy if you discover when you are doing via test, a seat of white area, okay? Also, 
in women with positive high risk human papilloma virus DNA also in women with suspicious appearing cervix even if the pap test is normal so if you have a suspicious cervix you should do colposcopy even if you did papanicolou uh, uh, stent test for cervical cytology and it was normal so you should do also colposcopy okay because this is a suspicious surface. In women also with post chitter bleeding, indicated for colposcopy. Also, conservative management of intraepithelial neoplasia. If you diagnose the case as intraepithelial neoplasia and you will give her conservative management, do colposcopy. Okay? So, this is some of the important indications for colposcopy. What else? Post-treatment follow-up after treatment of intraepithelial and invasive cervical carcinoma, do colposcopy. What are the other indications? If a woman has an unexplained abnormal lower genital tract bleeding or persistent abnormal vaginal discharge or bruritis valve or identification of vaginal or for identification of vaginal extension of cervical neoplasia or if there is history of in utero diacyl steroid exposure also all of us know that DS exposure which diacyl steroid was used in the past many decades in the past and the cause problem in the fetus let us on develop vaginal adenosis carcinoma lower genital tract malignancy and so on so if there is history of in utero diacylstoposterol exposure please do colposcopy okay so what is the colposcope what is the description of colposcope? As you see in this picture, this is a colposcope. This is a dissecting microscope, magnified the cervical, vaginal, or vulval tissue. There are, there are multiple options of colposcope. High and low power setting, different lens types, computer generated image, light filters, camera to capture image or video, and of course monitor you can see the details in this monitor this help the colposcopist very much okay most colposcopes have interchangeable magnification at 10x and the 18x the colposcope should have a normal light filter as well as a green filter why green filter very important to identify vascular pattern that can be difficult to recognize with white light. So what is the equipment to perform the procedure of colposcopy? I need self-retaining vaginal speculum, as you see here, Graves speculum, for example, or Casco speculum, but Graves is better. Give me a wider view. So self-retaining vaginal speculum, colposcope, and I need acetic acid 5% to do the test of, of acetovite area. Also, Lugol's iodine solution. As you, as you know that if we apply Lugol's iodine solution to the normal epithelium of the cervix, of the ecto cervix, will be brown in color. While the pathologic area will be yellow in color. Okay. If you apply acetic acid 5%, the, the abnormal epithelium will have white color. So we call it acetovite area. So I should prepare acetic acid, local solution, iodine solution, biopsy forceps, take a biopsy from the 
pathologic epithelium. Endocervical speculum, Dvorkian curette or endocervical brush. We take a biopsy also. Meso to stem bleeding to stop bleeding like monsoon solution, silver nitrate should be available beside you when you are going to do colposcopy. Okay. What about the technique? The colposcopist should examine the vulva, vagina, and the cervix grossly in the natural state. Okay. So at the start, examine vulva, vagina, and the cervix in the natural state. I mean, I didn't add anything. Then examine the cervix after application of 5% acetic acid. Okay. The entire cervix and the squamoculumnar junction must be visualized for adequacy. Both white light and red free, blue or green filter should be applied to the visual field in order to identify any lesions. Directed biopsy of lesion could be taken of each abnormal finding. Then application of monsoon solution or silver nitrate. If there is bleeding, I wanna to do hemostasis, I can use monosil solution or silver nitrate. Then documentation is very important. And they should comment on the visibility extent, adequate or inadequate, size, location, and description of each lesion. What about the color, contour, border, and vascular changes? Then, presence or absence of aceto white area, complete or incomplete visibility of squamoculumnar junction, documentation of biopsies and the, re and the locations. If an endocervical curettage was performed, and finally, the impression of colposcopy, is it benign or normal, or low grade, or high grade, or cancer, invasive cancer? Okay, let us start in details. General assessment may be adequate or inadequate. Example, cervix obscured by inflammation, bleeding, or scar. So it is better to ask the lady to come for colposcopy post menstrual, not during menstruation. Okay? This is the only preparation, but there is no prerequisite before colposcopy, really. But it is better not to be during menstruation. Okay? Okay, so if visualization is adequate or inadequate, you should mention in general assessment. What about squamoculumnar junction? Is it visible or not? What is squamoculumnar junction? This red line, area between the pink stratified squamous epithelium and the red columnar epithelium is called squamoculumnar junction. So, is it visible or not? You should mention completely visible or partially visible or not visible. Okay? Then, go to the transformation zone. Which type? Type 1 or 2 or 3? What is the difference between type 1, 2 and 3? Let us see here. Look to this picture, please. Type 1, the transformation zone is completely in the ectocervix. Okay? Okay. But in type 2, the upper limit of transformation zone is partly or wholly visible in the canal, in the endocervical canal. And is completely visible around 360 degrees. What about type 3? Part of the entire upper limit of the transformation zone cannot 
be seen in the canal. So I can't see the upper limit of the transformation zone. It is deep inside the canal. I can't see it. So we know the difference between type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1, transformation zone completely in the external cervix and the completely visualized easily. While in type 2, the upper limit of transformation zone inside the endocervical canal but can be seen around 36 degree. You can see it. While in type 3, the upper limit not completely visualized or cannot be seen. It is deep inside the endocervical canal. This is the difference between transformation zone. I really want to explain more about transformation zone. Please look to this picture. What is the transformation zone? The area between primary squamocolumnar juncture and the secondary squamocolumnar juncture. Look to this blue dot, blue, blue circle here. This is the primary squamocolumnar juncture, the original one. Okay? Then, after puberty with the inversion of the cervix, some of the columnar epithelium of the endocervix become exposed to the environment of the vagina. Metaplasia happen in some columnar epithelium, resulting in squamous cell epithelium. So this is a metaplastic epithelium. Okay, so I have here metaplastic epithelium. I have here the original squamous cell squamous epithelium. So now I have a second squamocolumnar junction called the secondary squamocolumnar junction, this in red line here. This is the line, the red line between the red columnar epithelium of the endocervix and the squamous epithelium resulted after metaplasia here. So this red line between endocervical columnar epithelium and metaplastic squamous epithelium here. Okay? So, the area between primary squamocolumnar junction, circle in blue, and secondary squamocolumnar junction, circle in red, this one, this area is called transformation zone. This area is called transformation zone. And this is the most active part in the cervix and the most dangerous part because it's the commonest site for cervical carcinoma and the co most commonest, commonest site also for CIN lesion, one or two or three, which is a precancerous. So we, we should comment on this transformation zone very well because it's very important because the cell in this area is active because metaplasia happened in this area and the change of the columnar epithelium into stratified squamous epithelium. Okay? So, transformation zone is the area between primary squamocolumnar junction and the secondary squamocolumnar junction. And now we know that we have, as regards transformation zone, we have three types type 1, type 2, type 3, as I discussed before. So, what is the normal colposcopic finding? As you Lock to this. This is a cervix. This is the external os. This is the ectocervix. cervix. Original squamous epithelium. The squamous epithelium is a smooth with pink tint after application of normal saline. If you apply it after a speculum examination, saline on the ectocervix cervix will appear pink in color. The original squamous epithelium. And to differentiate the original from metaplastic squamous epithelium, the original squamous epithelium appears more pink compared to the light pink color of metaplastic epithelium. Okay? In metaplastic squamous epithelium, you may find Nabothian cyst, crept opening, and of course, as I said, it is light pink in color. This is the metaplastic okay what about the abnormal colposcopic finding 
Let us go through the general principle. Grade 1, the minor lesions. Grade 2, the major lesions. And the non-specific lesions or signs. Okay? General principles. What is important in general principles? You should locate the lesion. Is it inside or outside the transformation zone? Also, you should describe it by clock position. You can say at 12 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, and so on. So, locate it by clock position, and you should describe is it inside or outside the transformation, inside the transformation zone? Okay, this is for any lesion. What about the size of the lesion? How can we know the size of the lesion? Number of cervical quadrants the lesion covers. Size of the lesion in the percentage of the cervix. Okay. Is it covering pores? One quadrant or more than? And so on. What is the percentage of the lesion in relation to the cervix? And so on. So the size and the location of the lesion is very important. Let us go to grade one lesion, which is less hazardous, or we call it the minor. Okay. What are the signs during colposcopy? Sin acid of white epithelium. If we apply the acetic acid, there appears sin. Irregular geographic border. Lock to this picture, please. This is the acid of white area. Irregular geographic border. Fine mosaic. You know the mosaic pattern or shape? This is a mosaic, but it is fine. Fine punctation. What is punctation? This is the vessels appear as a red spots on the surface of acetyl-white epithelium. So, red spots indicating intra-epithelial vessels. Is this the normal appearance of the vessel? No. The vessel in normal better below the epithelium, not intra epithelium but here in punctation there is intra epithelial vessels appear as the red spots on the surface of acetyl white air so this is grade one as i said before thin acetyl white area irregular geographic border fine mosaic fine punctation what about grade 2 or the major or the most dangerous because it is precancerous okay grade 2 dense acetyl white not fine dense dense acetyl white epithelium this area is dense acetyl white and also there is another important sign rapid appearance of acetyl white when you apply acetic acid 5% to the ectocervix, rapidly acetyl white area appear. So it is a sign you should observe it very well. And also the the acetyl white area is dense, opaque. Cuffed crab openings, coarse mosaic, coarse punctation. You remember the in grade one when we said fine bunk fine mosaic, fine punctation, here coarse mosaic, this is the mosaic pattern, coarse, coarse punctation here, the reddish spots are larger, coarse, okay, sharp border, Inner border sign, ridge sign, umbilication sign is a very important sign in a major degree or grade two. What is the inner border sign? What is the ridge sign? What is the umbilication sign? Inner border sign, you will find dull oyster white area inside a less opaque acetic white area. 
may be high grade inside low grade in, in an area of low grade the combination of both because there is opaque dull oyster white area inside less opaque acidic white area okay this is called inner border sign ridge sign if aceto white area is thick and elevated and is projected near the squamous columnar junction like the top of mountain what is the umbilication sign umbilication sign coarse punctation and the mosaicism are superimposed this mosaicism and punctation as in this area mosaicism and punctation superimposed in an area so that the capillary loops occur in the center of each mosaic type. In the center, as you see here, in the center of each mosaic type. This sign is called the application and the sign of high grade. Okay. Or there may be signs non specific like leukoplakia keratosis or hyperkeratosis or erosion local staining ideal or Scheller's test may be stained or non-stained what is also important is the signs suspecting invasion okay invasive cancer like atypical vessels letter shape branching vessels Fragile vessels, necrosis, ulceration, irregular surface, exophytic lesion, tumor, or grossly plasma. All these are suspicious for invasion. Or I may find during colposcopy what's called a miscellaneous finding. Congenital transformation zone, condyloma, polyp, whatever from the ectocervix or the endocervix, stenosis, inflammation endometriosis, congenital anomaly, all these are considered miscellaneous findings. Then data recording at the colposcopic examination, as indicated in the revised criteria for colposcopic examination from International Federation of Cervical Pathology and Colposcopy, data recording at the colposcopic examination must include indication for referral, number one, then, the high-risk human papilloma virus result and the grade of cytological abnormality. The presence or absence of cervix may be the patient dead before total structure. Whether the examination was adequate or inadequate for the examination to be adequate, the entire cervix and the squamocolumnar junction must be seen. Okay? So, to say adequate or inadequate for examination, adequate if I see the entire cervix and the squamocolumnar junction. The presence or absence of vaginal and or endocervical extension. Colposcopic feature of any lesion, as I said before, location, size, color, border, and so on so. Colposcopic impression of lesion grade. Is it grade one, grade two, invasive cancer? and so on, or normal or benign. Type of transformation zone. Is it type one or two or three? Also the site of any colposcopy uh, colposcopy directed biopsies. Any biopsies taken, I should mention the site and how many biopsies. As regards the directed punch biopsy, unless an excisional treatment is planned, biopsy should be carried out when cytology is high grade and always when a recognizable a typical transformation zone is present. Okay, let us know about Swede score. Swede score carrying certain score giving the 0, 1, 2 for certain signs. Then we sum at the end 
from 1 to 4, from 5 to 7, from 7 to 10. Okay. As regard the items, aceto uptake, aceto white acetic acid test, I mean. Grade zero, if zero or transparent after I applied acetic acid, there is no aceto white area or transparent. Or it will take grade one and a score also it will take score one if shady, milky, not transparent and the not opaque at the same moment. Okay. But it will take in score two if opaque, white, distinct. As regard the margins or surface, for zero diffuse, for one sharp but irregular, jagged, rough geographical satellites. For score two, sharp and the even. The difference in surface level, including cuffing. As regard the vessels, fine, regular for zero, absent for one, coarse or atypical for two, lesion size, less than five millimeter for zero, from five to fifteen millimeter or two quadrants for one. More than 15 millimeter or three to four quadrants or endocervical un undefined will take score two. Iodine staining, brown for zero, faintly or patchy yellow for one, distinct yellow for two. After I finish or with score, I'll sum the score and got the result overall sweet score from zero to four as regard the colposcopic prediction of probable histology low grade or normal or CIN1 from zero to four as regard overall sweet score five to six the colposcopic prediction of probable histology may be high-grade non-invasive cancer, CIN2. As regard the overall sweet score 7 to 10, the colposcopic prediction of probable histology, high-grade or suspected invasive cancer, or CIN2 or plus. Okay? But really, what is also interesting is that Alfonso et al. 2022, published in British Journal of Obstetric and Gynecology, this article about colposcopic assessment by Swedish score evaluation of effectiveness in the Swedish screening program, a cross-sectional study, they concluded that Swedish score works well in routine clinical setting but colposcopy assist with sweet score was inferior to that reported in previous clinical studies neither safe threshold for not taking biopsy at colposcopy nor a threshold for c and the treat based on scoring alone were identified Colposcopy with concurrent cytology and the human papillomavirus testing is superior to routine colposcopy alone assessed with sweet score when it comes to prediction of CIN2+. So, this is the conclusion after the study. And this is the end of my lecture. I hope it was clear enough. Please Remember my box, it is now five books published on Amazon, belong to me, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, and the newest 
book is medical disorder in pregnancy and this is my site on amazon and my site on youtube and my site on blogspot thank you everybody my best wishes for all of you